But tell them them, them, them now I have to eat carrot for beta carotene. They can eat mame, pumpkin, papaya, you, you, you name them. All right. There's plenty of orange foods that you can eat if you're not eating the carrot. Now, this, this uh, issue that we're facing with these hybrid foods, let me tell you just one thing. At least a good 90% of all of these things we call food today are hybrid. Mm -hmm. Even the grain. <laughs> Even the grain. It's only been 10,000 years you've been eating rice. So you're not mm -hmm. telling me that rice is not hybrid? Mm -hmm. So you're telling me up on the character and you're still shoveling down big buckets of, 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 of rice and beans. All them something that hybrids too. So we need to really, you know, get it straight. It's not just the carrot as a root vegetable, but all of the other root vegetables. Mm -hmm. Okay, the cassava, the potato. If you not eat carrot, you should never eat potato. Carrot mm -hmm. have more moisture, juice, water than potato. Look at the starch that's in potato. Mm -hmm. So, you wait, know, wait. you you know, effective just so. You know, thanks to our brother, you know, our master teacher, Dr. Sabi, who brought this awareness to us. But we are here to expand on his teaching, you know, to share with you that, yes, be careful about these hybrid foods. You know what I mean, um, I mean for cut you, but starch, where does that end up when you eat it? Where does it go? Well, starch, this group of food... Uh, nutritionally, they're known as complex carbohydrates. And, you know, anything that's complex is, carbo is complicated. So let us start from there with starch. It's a complicated food. The simple carbohydrates, the ones that are not complex, that are not complicated, are the fruits, which are sugar. Carbohydrates are sugar. So the fruit sugar is a simple carbohydrate. We're talking... The, the, the watermelon, the orange, the pine, the mango, the apple, all of these simple sugar, starches, potato, rice, beans. These foods are complex carbohydrates. For the body to be able to utilize it, it has to be converted into a simple carbohydrate. It has to be broken down into a simple sugar. So ideally, it's good to do this process before you even consume the grains, is to break it as much as possible. So the classical example, the one that everyone eats practically more than anything else, beside the rice, you know, is the wheat. You see how you get that wheat in the form of a flour, and you make bread, you make cake, cookies, biscuits, you do all sort of things, tons of wheat. Weed itself, you know, throughout history, a lot of people call it uh, the staff of life. But no, today it has been really condemned to the staff of death. When anybody talk about glue, or better yet, gluten, they're really speaking about wheat. Wheat has more gluten than anything else. So realistically, when they say you should go gluten-free, they should say you just go, go wheat-free. <laughs> but yes, there's other grains is that contain gluten as well, just as much as the wheat. The larger grains tend to contain gluten. Glue, glue. So that wheat, if you just take the whole wheat berry mm -hmm. and you soak it for 12 hours, you remove the enzyme inhibitor, the, 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 the lock, the safety valve yeah. that keeps that starch energy dormant. So this is in the germ. So the germ gets unlocked and it germinates after you soak it for 12 hours. In the next 24 hours, it germinates, which means it comes to life. It's a living germ now. <laughs> it's germinated. The wheat germ is now alive, ready. And you know what happens when you start eating them kind of live germs. So I'm teaching you all to bake it, roast it, do all kind of something with it. Because this particular germ is a certain issue because of the glue in it. So ideally, after you germinate it, you need to let it sprout. And what is sprouting? You need to let it live. <laughs> you need to let it grow. So the roots come out first, and normally those roots get anchored into the earth. So you're supposed to plant the sprouted wheat berries, and then within seven days, you, grow, you sprout them for about three days. You know, you, you, after you soak them, rinse, you rinse them, drain them, 
let them sit in a colander or something for about three, four days, and you give them a bath twice a day. You rinse them twice a day because now they are living foods and they're generating waste that needs to be bathed off. So after they sprouted, you plant them. A good seven days later, you get wheat grass. Wheat grass, the same way we get ganja grass from ganja seeds, from all these seeds. So seeds, so, so grains are actually seeds for cereal grass, mm -hmm. not to be used as cereal, <laughs> like wheat puff and those things. They are to grow into grass. Because once that wheat grass, once that grass is grown now, the starch in the wheat grass has been converted to a good 40 to 50% sugar. So okay. the wheat grass now is a green leafy vegetable which is a neutral food. It's a balancer. It's a stabilizer. But obviously, us, humankind, not being grass eaters by nature, we're not herbivores. We're not like goats and horses and cows with eyes on the side of our head. And when we chew, we masticate up and down and side to side. We triturate or grind the grass in our mouth into a mulch. You try doing that with grass, even the ones you eat. The, the spinach and all that thing. You're supposed to chew each mouthful at least 32 times <laughs> if you have 32 teeth in your head. For every teeth you miss, tooth you're missing, kick another chew in, <laughs> okay? So that's how you, you, you mulch it down, you triturate it, you grind it down into a pulp, mm -hmm. and then you're supposed to swallow it, drop it down into your intestinal system and squeeze the juice out. So these... Uh, herbivores, they have multiple chambers in their stomach to squeeze that juice out. So when they squeeze that juice out now, now it is sugar. They decomplexed the complicated carbohydrate and turn it into sugar in their system. Then from there now they're able to produce B12, chlorophyll, calcium, and all other minerals. But first it needs to be broken down, needs to be digested. So we cannot do that. So thanks to modern technology, we got to get them a big up on the juicer and the blender where we can take our grass, our lettuce, spinach, wheat grass, and blend them, a little coconut water or some cucumber in them to get them some extra moisture to blend down, and then you squeeze it out. You wring it out. The same way we, 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 we soak, we, we get the Cersei and we soak it in a little, you know, look little water from the, from the river and we... we you know, crush it in our hand like we crush ganja. You know, you crush the ganja. Same way we crush the, the Cersei with a little river water and we squeeze it out and we drink the Cersei juice. Supposed to do that with all greens. So now what you're doing, you're extracting, you're getting the sugar. So taking that wheat from a starch, which is a magnetic food, it's a builder. Starch build the body by stuffing them. So that's why when you eat the starch, you get stuffy. You feel stuffy. I'm stuffed up, looking just like a turkey, stuffed, like, full of stuffing. <laughs> so the deal is now, once you get the starch, you're migrating it mm. from a magnetic food, a builder, a starch, a stuffer, by soaking it, germinating it, sprouting it, and turn it into a grass. Now you move it into the category with the green leafy vegetables, lettuce, spinach, kale, all of them now is just in the same category as these grass, wheat grass, and all of these grains that we converted from the staff of death, now we're bringing them in over to the staff of life category. But when people are eating this glue, what does it do as a glue, not as a, as a life? Because most people don't do that. They don't do that. So when you eat this glue now, it don't turn into sugar. Unless you get out and you rev up your engine like a Usain Bolt, turn your, your, your body into a refinery and run and turn it into sugar. <laughs> That's why I'm saying you know, runners, them load up with pasta and then they go out there and then run and make sugar as they run. We don't do that. We're sitting on the couch, you know, whatever other... So this glue now, this gluten which is basically white flour. The wheat has eight layers. The outer layer is, is the wheat bran, which is the, 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 the covering. 
the core of the wheat is the germ, and between the bran and the germ, there's six layers of gluten, white flour. Mm. So they strip away the gluten, they, they strip away the, 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 the bran and the uh, germ, and they sell you the white flour. So it has no fiber, it has no life core, because that's they make more money with, with selling them apart. So this starch does not digest. Cooked starch does not digest unless, again, you do what we said you should be doing. Bun it, turn it into sugar. So your legs, your thighs, and you feel that if you eat a whole bunch of starch, especially to the ladies, what them call that, cellulites? Yeah. <laughs> that's where them end up. Dandruff, that's where them end up, flaking out. Athlete's foot, with the yeast coming out of your, your feet, that's undigested starch. And it's also definitely have, have a link to diabetes as well. So we need to watch all these things. So yes, we just bury them or we hide them, we stash them. <laughs> and eventually kidney stones, <laughs> gallstones. And you remember something granny used to say, oh, you have a bunion? <laughs> you know, granny from Jamaica, so you, have a, you have a big bunion by your, by your, by your, by your, by your big toe. Uh, it was only for bun. <laughs> that's, a bun up, that's a bun thing. Or bun up rice. Oh, you have, corn, you have corn on your toe? Bro, you must eat a whole heap of corn meal. So, Grandma, they, 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 they might tell you the truth. You know, they might tell you just as it is. They're not sugarcoat, nothing. I'll tell you nothing so about this and that. When they say it's a corn, it's a corn because you ate too much corn or other grains with starch that did break down. And because starch settle in the lower extremities, they're going to settle in those places and dry out. And, you know, modern medicine have a classification. Because it's been glor the name has been glorified, like how they even use a name like cholesterol to represent animal pus, fat from the bacon. So you don't even see the connection. <laughs> when them tell you, you know, 
decrease your cholesterol consumption. Them should I just tell you, stop eating the, 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 the jerk pork. <laughs> Be straight and blunt with the people there. Because <laughs> those kind of cholesterols are only found in animal products, not in plant food. Okay, two seconds, I'm going to bring you back. Hang on. Because it, it's got a delay, so I'll bring you back in like one second. Just comment again for me, please, so I can find yeah. it. Yeah, please. All right. Turn on the comment in. All right, now is a great opportunity, second time, for you to go and get your friends. DM this live to your friends. Go and find them. This account is not private, so you are able to go and DM it to your friends. So leave this right now. All thousand people disappear. Go and send this. Oh, actually, you can just DM it from the bottom. DM it to your friends. Go and comment on their page. Um, go find your, your, your favorite friend in the DM and say, yo, there's some bars that are being dropped in this live. Um, so, go and go do that now. And if you want to go to the restroom, now is the time to go to the restroom. Um, but yeah, message your friends and tell them to come. Because uh, we're going to be asking more questions. You see the way that he break it down? He break down layers, 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 layers. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go and uh, alleviate myself. You should go too and I'll be back in a couple minutes. Did you go and get your friend? Don't let them miss out, you know. Um, it's not done. I'm now going to bring Alice back and we can get back to it. Alice, did you comment? Let me try and find him. Yeah, shout out to proud Jamaicans. Respect. Mm -hmm. I wonder if Alice is back. Next question that was being asked was um, gastrite. The, the, a sister from New Jersey, she went to check her doctor because she has gastritis and her doctor said, don't eat fruits and vegetables. You should stay away from fruits and vegetables and eat um, white rice, white pasta, not even whole wheat. Um, clearly he wants a, a diabetes patient. Um, <laughs> what would you or she has gastritis. What is gastritis? Yeah, well, see, I tell you, we, we really have to get be careful about getting caught up in these traps with even the namings of these diseases and things of that, that level. First of all, the body is self-healing. Mm -hmm. The body has a five-layer, you know, healing system that starts with, with, with the blood, the immune system. You know, we have it within us to rectify any disease condition of the body. So now we have to be careful though. You can only do that 
if you have your relationship with the food that your body was best designed to function on in the right place, which means you should be eating plant foods, fruits and vegetables. You know, I said some protein, some grains. So, and the body would auto-correct itself. Mm -hmm. So a lot of this stuff here, because really on superficial level, there's no medicine, there's no dr herbs, there's no drugs, there's no food that's going to heal you. Your body has to heal itself. So you don't have to put it back in a position where it's capable of defending itself. So just stop attacking it. Stop retoxing it constantly. Then now you have to go deal with these systems. These systems are not designed for healing. The medical system is not designed for healing. They're just dealing with symptoms. And they just basically help you to tolerate these symptoms a little longer. You know, and then the whole system is structured where because they never learn anything about food, they actually, you're challenging them and putting them in these ridiculous predicaments you know, so that's why even when you go into the hospital, they're going to have the same food for you that you ate that got you in the hospital, the mac and cheese and all of this stuff. And if they give you anything, say, through a, a, a feeding tube, it's going to be chemicals with a lot of these things that cause the problem in the first place. So they're just here to give you relief, temporary, and allow you to tolerate more of the problem. So, yes, if you start eating sugar, fruits, because of this issue now, the fruits are going to get in there and bust up, really just bust down the door. <laughs> and a lot of this waste, a lot of this garbage that caused the situation is going to rush the bloodstream. You might have a healing crisis. So it's important to know how to balance these things, how to approach these things. But number one, the first question you should ask the doctor, now, what caused this storm there? <laughs> what is the cause of this particular condition? So because your first protocol, your first order of, 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 of working with your body is to stop putting in any more of the cause. So as a mechanic, a body mechanic right there off the mark, if it won't tell you to address the cause first, or you don't even mention it. It's like it's not an issue. Or they may tell you, oh, there's no known cause to this disease. Because they, he never studied it. He never know, found out anything about food. So, so I, I'm, I'm very careful myself. Number one, I do not prescribe. Of course, I'm not licensed as a medical doctor. And these are the kind of things that let them come and shut us down on these sites. So if you want to even answer to that question even today, just go up on, the, on, on, on a search engine and ask the dummies. <laughs> the same question you ask us here, just ask the dummies. And you're going to get a whole lot of answers come up. You might even want to put in natural cures for gastritis or whatever. You know, and that's for you because you have to start doing the homework. You have to take on you have to take charge. You have to take responsibility. It is you who caused these things to happen to you. It's not in mind. It's not the system. It's not because of that. You put the food in your mouth. <laughs> so you need to start from there as a primary basis of healing. Stop putting any more cause in once you find out what it is. And then the second level is to start removing what's inside of the system. So just a general detox period which would help all of us to move on. And that's why even myself, over the years, I've recognized that you know, we did not come here with no nutritional charts, no graphs, no guidelines, no nothing. We really don't even have a body owner's manual, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know. So now these people are developing one <laughs> and putting us in these tricky situations. But really, you're supposed to just eat the original, natural, and best food for human consumption, which is primarily foods. If there is a law of food, go back to your scriptures. And look wherever you see the words, and behold, for I've given unto you seed yielding trees, and unto you they shall be your meat. Mm. So your food, your avocado, <laughs> should have, should yield a seed. Mm -hmm. So that's your backyard. Throwing you a 300 avocado every year. You don't have to do nothing. You don't have to till no soil. You don't have to cut no grass. You don't have to rake no leaf. 
and your food is coming to you just like a, that natural factory, 300 avocado every year. And guess what? Every single avocado drop off your tree, have another potential tree in it. So next year, <laughs> you should have 300 trees, 301. Next year, you drop all them seeds there. You know what I mean? you don't, don't eat them. Don't follow some of these clowns in the raw food circles that blend up the avocado seed. The seed's supposed to go back to the earth. That's the food factory. Mm -hmm. And same way, on and on and on. And you should have abundance of food. But, you know, that's why probably some of these something are going on right now. So you need to sit on home and reflect. You know, you gave up your garden of eating. And you're in places oh. where you can grow food. Even in, even in Kingston, Jamaica, we can still have a mango tree in the backyard. A aki tree in the, in the front yard. You see a look of food here and there. Banana tree everywhere. Papa tree just grow like wherever. <laughs> just drop, drop a seed. You know, so come on back home. Come on back home. <laughs> the sister, so the sister who is in New Jersey, you say she should have a general detox first and then she's not supposed to retox. So water first, juice first, and then when she go back to eating, she needs to keep out the starch, try to keep down or keep out of the cooked food, sugar, salt, et cetera, so she doesn't have a condition of her intestinal system. That's correct. And, you know, you can complement, you know, the, the fresh fruits and vegetables with your herbs. You can look it up. Look up which herb is good for this particular condition and incorporate it into your detox healing program. You know, have your nice cup of herb tea, whatever it is. You know, there's different tinctures and, and, and oils and things that you could use as well. You know, they're, they're, they're power shot foods like ginger, onion, garlic, Turmeric, lemon, all them bitter something, them like 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 watercress, <laughs> aloe vera. These are the things. Now these are like the power, you know, scrubbers, <laughs> or, you know, that will get in there. You now I strip these things off very quickly, but then hydration, hydration, hydration. As they're being stripped off the walls, you need to hose them out. So this is where the coconut water, the orange juice, the melon juice, or even just eat eat the watermelon. I mean, look, you want a simple. Easy, very reasonable detox. Just go find you a good 30 pound watermelon and just eat that alone for one day. And you see what start come out. <laughs> it starts to detox. You don't have to do nothing. You don't have to take no special formula or nothing. All you have to do is, is, is yum, yum your watermelon. <laughs> right there, that alone. And you might feel nice enough. They say, well, let me just have a, ne a one next, next day. You might go three, four days. You might even go 10 days on a melon mono. You don't have to drink no water. You don't have to do nothing but just eat watermelon and you see what, what clear out to the system. Watermelons has tons of electrolytes and it will clear the, clean the system out naturally just by eating. So thy food shall be thy medicine and thy medicine shall be thy food. Brings me on to the man who first said that, which is... <laughs> First recorded polymath on earth. Yes. Um, for the people that don't know, Imhotep is uh, the god and father, uh, founding father of um, medicine. And he came up with the Ebos papyrus um, surgery. He made a pyramid. He was, a, well, he engineered a pyramid. He didn't actually build it, but he engineered uh, and did the mathematics for a pyramid. He was the first recorded polymath on Earth. That means multiple genius. And it's interesting how 2,500 years later, after Imhotep, Hi um, Hippocrates actually studied what Imhotep's work. And then Hippocrates, the Greek um, physician, came up with uh, let the herb be thy medicine. But he actually learned from Imhotep, who said, that food is your medicine and medicine is your food. And now uh, when you're a doctor, you have to take a, a, a Hippocratic oath, which is actually a, a oath of hypocrisy because when they say thou shall not harm, but these doctors are continually prescribing things that treat symptoms and not treat the underlying cure because they don't treat nutrition. When you have a, a doctor like uh, uh, Dr. Africa, Dr. Sebi, Dr. Aris, 
they will not they do not want to give away the um the doctorate as a holistic naturopathic degree reason being is because if you treat the whole problem then you can't build an industry from the problem so the same people who actually studied under ancient africans are now saying that modern and contemporary africans practicing ancient traditions are not fully qualified doctors because they don't have a doctorate's degree that is basically a nowadays a degree to prescribe drugs am i right or am i right well said you know uh imhotep is the first person known in history to uh express that the blood circulates in the human body he's supposed to be the one that discovered the circulation of the blood imhotep as my brother said he was not just a a a doctor you know he was a visor the mm. visor to the pharaoh <laughs> this is the trusted hand of the pharaoh so back then during those times to even reach that capacity you have you had to even go beyond multitasking you had to go you had to be into multi knowledge so this was a a a a, a man of many trades many skills many arts many sciences so you know to see them people come you know a few thousand years later and stamp their name on his work you know because mm -hmm. they used to use simple language back then they would just say you eat drink and be merry because tomorrow you may die <laughs> so your food supposed to bring you merriment not make you upset disturb and distress so this is the spirit that we have brought the stuff in and this is the spirit that we're continuing to share it with you even on this level so that it can be palatable to you in your everyday circumstances and not you know gang you up with all this big medical legalese or nutritional big words you know that get you confused you don't need no charts no graphs or anything you don't need no nutritional you know program you just need to eat the fresh fruits and vegetables and balance them variety 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 so i want to finish one note on the on the grass especially the wheat grass so i have some wheat grass here mm -hmm. now this wheat grass you know it's as again it's not an electromagnetic food we brought it from a magnetic food a builder into a green leafy vegetable an electromagnetic food so it's a balancer it's a stabilizer but then mm -hmm. the next step is to take this wheat grass and put it through a juice extractor and you get wheat grass juice mm -hmm. wheat grass juice you could take wheat grass juice and put it on the microscope next to your blood and you will see that it has the same molecular structure as the human blood wow so it oxygenates it gets to the blood immediately remove toxins and oxygenate the blood oxygenate the cells where the toxins were been released so those toxins obviously you're going to take some wheat grass juice now wheat grass juice has been migrated now from an electromagnetic food from a green leafy vegetable now it becomes an electrical food so it's in the company with the fruits now with the watermelon the coconut water it will clean you out but it's so powerful that a one ounce shot might be a od if you're very toxic you take a one ounce shot of fresh wheat grass juice Next time you pass by a juice bar and about wheat grass juice, take a one ounce shot, but make sure you do it on an empty stomach. It's going to rip those toxins out of the cells immediately. Dump mm -hmm. them into the bloodstream, and if you're extremely toxic, you're going to feel dizzy, nauseous because all those toxins in the bloodstream are going to hit the brain cells now, and the top those the blood circuit moves slower in the brain than anywhere else. so you're going to get this toxic rush and you're going to blame it on the wheat grass and it's something make me sick <laughs> <laughs> okay so you now you're supposed to follow it with your coconut water because the coconut water being a true electrical food is going to now remove those toxins out of your system so there's a whole science with this you know and a lot of us we jump into this stuff plant based plant based and all of this stuff and we just go eating you know the the regular uh oat milk that comes out of the health food store you know the 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 organic you know corn chips and we think we we got it made but mm. be careful study a little deep there's more 
than what you see on the surface. But well, we're going to go to questions now. Um, the first question is, can pregnant women do a water fast? No. I do not no. recommend it. The, ideally, you should not do anything that involves detoxing while you're pregnant. That's a very dangerous move because the waste that you're going to release might end up uh, in the embryo, more than likely. So you might poison the baby. So, you, so any situations like this that you're planning on doing, do it before you conceive. Okay. <laughs> okay so detox before you conceive. Plan a good two years before you start to, to think of conceiving and get those cells ready. But do not change and do any radical detox while you're pregnant or le 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 breastfeeding. Okay, next question. So basically, um, see now me, I've, I decided that I was gonna detox myself for a while um, before I have a child. I don't yet have a child, but I wanted to make sure I was as healthy as possible before I have a child. Not that I have anyone in, in mind in particular, but I know that you know I'm 32 now, I'm getting to that stage. So what would you say to people who are planning to have children kind of there in, in, in quarantine right now um, and they're just going to do it because they're bored. Should, you're, you're saying so that they should, they should get fit, healthy, do all the detox and then prepare their body before they have children. That's what you're saying, right? Yes, because ideally, you know, the sperm and the egg that comes together, we need to have them fit and ready. You know, that foundation for the DNA of that child is in that initial, you know, uh, ecstasy, <laughs> you know, of conception. So we need to get, get ourselves ready, you know, because with many of us, we might just be really, you know, dealing with, with uh, toxic secretions, you know, bouncing back and forth between each other. So ideally, yes, do some form of detox, at least slow down, back up. Mm -hmm. and, if, and then this is the time now where you want to institute, say, uh, doing a juice fast, once a week or water fast. So if you start now and once you have conceived and you're pregnant, you can continue doing your water fast once you now are pregnant because you've already conditioned the body to function that way and you don't have the toxic buildup in the body that have to be rushed out that the baby now has to fight with, you know. And the man for his, for his sperm, does... Does, is it just the woman that needs to detox or should the man or oh, both. for conception? Both. Yeah, the man needs to be there before conception, during conception where we're always present, and during pregnancy, during uh, uh, birth. Mm. You know, this whole concept of a midwife, a whole bunch of us be like, whoa, you know, a woman having a wife. Mm. A woman having a What happened to the man? Let the, let the husband be the mid. <laughs> Why you not produce a, a, a next wife? Some of y'all are jealous of women, you don't want the next wife in the family, but when it comes to birth, you know you want a midwife. <laughs> so, you know, so the man needs to be there before, during, you know, at the moment, and follow through all the way. We need to, to build these foundations right away, you know. So it's very crucial, you know, and our food has to be considered very, very seriously. It's the main ingredient that makes us who we are. So, you know, we don't want to build the baby, you know, uh, or the embryo, you know, to be an addict. 